Hi, my name is Francis O'Reilly. I'm an amateur telescope maker. Welcome to my optical shop. There are a number of amateur telescope makers in the United States. It's a hobby. Why do we make our own telescopes when you can go to the store and buy one? Or look in Sky and Telescope, which is a magazine, or astronomy, and pick out a need or a celestron? or an obsession if you're well endowed financially? Well, there's a number of reasons. One, it's an intellectual pursuit. It's fun. Two, you can make a much better telescope than you could buy simply because you can put more time into figuring your own optics than a telescope maker can in a commercially viable manner. And. Uh, you know, another reason is it's just something that we do. It's, it's a way the telescopes have been made. I got my first telescope making kit when I was 11 years old. My dad bought me a telescope for uh, my birthday, I think when I was about 10. Maybe he bought it when I was 11. I wanted something a little bit more substantial. And when I was 12, I guess it was actually, he bought me a six inch mirror making kit from Edmund Scientific. I made the mirror. I still have it today. It's not the best mirror in the world, but it's certainly adequate. And uh, since then, I've been hooked on telescope making, on and off. It comes and goes, alternates sometimes with our other interests, such as uh, old trucks. But uh, it's, it's a good thing to do. My optics workshop is not unlike Optic work, optics workshops of many amateurs. It's a small area in my basement. In it, I have a work stand on which I make my optics, which is basically a cut out circle of plywood covered with newspaper and mounted on top of a 55 gallon drum. I have to my left a work table. And of course, what optics workshop would be complete without a cat to uh, annoy me? I have a sink available, and I'm just going to pan the camera and show you a little bit about my workshop. I have two shelves of supplies. On the top shelf, I have all my polishing equipment. I have some turpentine, a couple of cans. I have pitch, cerium oxide, and things that basically go into polishing. On the next level, I have some paper towels and some fine grit. I keep my uh, 9 micron aluminum oxide, 5 micron aluminum oxide, and 3 micron aluminum oxide on the next shelf. I also keep a spray bottle, and at the far end I keep a scale for measuring out bags of aluminum oxide. The next level, I keep my mid-range abrasives. My 500 micron aluminum oxide, 22 and a half, uh, I'm sorry, 500 uh, grade carborundum silicon carbide, my, 22, my 25 and 22 and a half micron aluminum oxide, 12 and a half micron aluminum oxide. On the bottom, sh on the uh, second shelf from the bottom, I keep my coarse abrasives, my number 80, 120, and 320 silicon carbide. And on the very bottom shelf, I keep some glass. On the next shelf, I keep a variety of tools and testing equipment, as well as some additional glass, some additional abrasives, mirror mounts, things of that nature. On my work table, I keep various woodworking supplies. I have a table saw that I just purchased from Sears. I have some other hand tools. 
The yellow bucket carries a 8-inch tool for an 8-inch mirror I made. In the back on the work table, I have a 12 and a half inch blank and a 12 and a half inch tool. To the left, some wood. I have a crucible because I'm considering casting some parts of my own. On the front uh, table, I also have a light for doing mirror inspections, some spherometers. And to the far right, I keep the work that I'm working on. The project I'm working on right now is building an optical flat, actually three optical flats. There are a number of methods with which you can build optical flats, but the uh, old method, but the method I, I'm comfortable with, is to grind three surfaces against each other. And when all three surfaces are in perfect contact with each other, the only way that can happen is if they're all three perfectly flat. I bought three pieces of seven inch Pyrex from a firm in California called Newport Glass. Their service was excellent. I ordered it on a Thursday, I believe I got it, or they shipped it the following Monday and I got it a little more than a week after I ordered it. And I believe that I got it uh, you know, after they had to, after they had to manufacture it, they may have cut it off a log of, uh, of uh, Pyrex. Uh, the Pyrex is fine in the old, which means that it's cooled homogeneously so that the exterior doesn't cool before the interior, thereby creating strain when the interior cools and contracts so the glass is unstrained, and that's a very important issue. When I got it, there were some tooling marks on it. I discovered that when I tried to fine grind the glass and uh, couldn't get the tooling marks out. So I started grinding them with 120 carborundum, silicon carbide. And uh, then I ground down from 120 to 220 to 320 to 500, then I went into the aluminum oxides at 22 and a half micron, 15 micron, 9 micron, and I'm currently working on 5 micron. Now these flats are also going to be flat on both sides. In other words, the A side and the B side of each disc is going to be an optical flat. I've never made an optical flat before, and I'm doing this so that I can get some experience figuring surfaces. Most people say when you make three flat, or you make optical flats using the three flat method, you'll have one very good flat and two acceptable flats, because once you have a good one, why continue? Well, for me, I want to continue because I want to get the experience. My next project is going to be a substantially larger optical flat. And before I start tearing up the real expensive glass, I want to get some experience working on the less expensive glass. And I've learned some things. One thing I've learned is to keep a good bevel on the uh, pieces that I'm working on. And I do that by sanding them with a piece of diamond grit sandpaper that I was able to buy on eBay uh, for pretty cheap. I think it was under $10, of course, plus shipping and handling, but uh, I, I bought it for a very good price. Uh, I noticed that as I'm grinding, little chips are occasionally falling off the side of the blanks, and, and not too often, but it's an area that I'm concerned about and I need to learn how to deal with before I start getting involved in the more expensive big glass. I've learned that cats really like to eat, and if you don't feed them when they want to feed you, uh, when they want to be fed, they bother you. I don't think I've learned that as a result of being a telescope maker, though. Um, I've gone through the five micron aluminum oxide on my three flats on one side, 
I now have to turn the three flats over and work on them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, flats on the table. I'm going to put one flat on the table face up and the other one I'm going to put face down. I'm going to put some aluminum oxide between them. Five micron aluminum oxide. I've already cleaned everything up uh, when I first converted to a five micron aluminum oxide. And I'm going to grind the two together. I'm going to grind them together for five minutes and then I'm going to recharge the piece on bottom with some more aluminum 